Hi friends, welcome to This Prepared Life. I'm Allison and I am so glad you're here. Today I am working on getting some fruit trees planted and I am also gonna take you on a tour of my greenhouse. I'm planting fruit trees today and I'm just gonna get a little bit down at a time. This is a big process. Um, we bought seven new fruit trees yesterday to replace ones that the voles had eaten. Um, not over this last winter, but the winter before. And um, we did not buy bare root trees this year because we wanted to get bigger trees that had larger trunks that the voles couldn't chew through. So last winter, we actually went around and hardware clothed everything. So we did not lose any trees this last winter, which I was super grateful for. So we paid the extra to buy larger trees that are ready. They're in pots with some soil. And so I'm gonna get those into the ground and we have a thunder and lightning storm coming. So I'm gonna see what I can get done before that happens. So this process is going to be a little different than if we had bare root trees. Um, with bare root trees, you don't have a ton of roots that are coming off. You do have usually a good main root, but the nursery said that these trees um, most likely are going to have a lot of roots. So I am digging my hole the depth of the pot, but twice the width. and. Um, I am also amending our soil with, um, I have some bags of chicken manure that I found on clearance at the end of last garden season. They were a dollar a bag, so I grabbed as many as they had. I have some of those, and then I also have some bags of potting soil to amend. Our soil is super sandy. So um, right now, it's pretty moist because, you know, <laughs> Winter has just ended and the snow is melting. Um, but as soon as this starts to dry out, the soil is gonna just turn to pure sand. So I'm gonna amend a lot of this hole with that chicken manure and the bagged potting soil that I have left over. And then I will mulch this as soon as we have some grass clippings. Um, everything's still brown so I don't have any grass clippings I do have some straw so I may use that um, but yeah so let's get this hole dug it is really easy digging in this section of the garden which I am super grateful for some sections of our property have a lot of rock but this section is mostly sand. So let's see what that looks like. Kitty, you're gonna have to move. Oh, that came out really easy. I thought for sure I would need Joe to help me with that. But yeah, so the nursery guy said, make sure that you cannot be too rough with these trees. Before I pull this apart, I'm going to make sure my hole is the right depth. I'm actually a little too deep, so I'm going to add some dirt back. So I don't want it too deep because I don't want the tree to sink and compact down into the hole. So this is some potting soil that I had bought um, at the end of the season on clearance. And I am just mixing it in to add some organic matter into this sandy soil. If I buy something at the end of the year, I typically won't use it to say start my seedlings because it has sat in a shed and sometimes it can have bugs in it and things like that. So I won't put it in my greenhouse, but I'm totally fine with using it out here to plant these fruit trees. Thank you. 
So a good rule of thumb when you are filling a hole is you really don't want more than a third of the soil that you are putting in to be compost. So I'm just going to add little bits of compost. I am going to add some fertilizer to this and then we're going to get this tree in and get it planted. And I think I took my garden gloves in the house. So we're just going to make do. See, now I've got too much dirt, but I think as I wiggle these roots, a lot of that loosen them, a lot of the dirt is gonna fall away, so. So I really want to be able to spread these roots throughout the hole. I always worry when I'm doing something like this that I am just being too rough because um, you don't want to break the roots, but you do want to loosen them. But plants are pretty resilient. So let's really break these up. Some of these are a little root bound. They've been in that pot for a while. Every year never fails, I ruin one pair of pants. So this pair is going to end up being my garden pants for a That guy's a little crooked, let's fix that. I actually could have gone a little bit lower on this one, but I think it's okay. The larger grass clods I use to make kind of a ring around the tree helps keeps the weeds from growing it also helps create like a a well that I can water and it will keep the water all around this area we have one faucet so far, one spigot in the entire garden area. And Joe just moved that in for me last year. And um, oh, that was so nice to have water inside the fence. All of the previous years I had to go out the fence and walk all the way around to get it turned on. So it was super nice when he was finally able to move that spigot inside the fence, but we still have not ran irrigation lines or drip irrigation or anything into the garden. So um, lots of hoses and garden timers and all of that mulch that came out of the tree, all the bark I am just kind of placing on the top. And then on this downhill side, like I said, I'm just using the dirt clods to kind of build a little wall. So I expect this will sink a little bit. But not too much because I packed that down pretty good in there. And then give this a good drink of water and a mulch and we've got one fruit tree in. This one is a 20th century Asian pear. So let's get the rest of these fruit trees planted. So this one is actually a crab apple. It's an edible crab apple, but I don't know if you've ever seen crab apple trees. Like edible is sometimes kind of laughable. They're not great fresh eating. And even the edible crab apples 
are, are pretty tiny. So, but we got this one as a pollinator and also um, because we have beets. So it will bloom for a considerable amount of time and um, give the bees something to eat. And it also blooms fairly early. You can see that this one is already um, leafing out and the nursery we bought it from is local to us. So this plant, this tree overwintered here in our climate. Um, but it is about five, 10 degrees warmer where the nursery is. So, um, but having a early food source for bees is important for us here. So, and I'm just loosening these roots again. I don't know if my hole is big enough, but we will see. Whew, that's heavy. <clears throat> no. Okay, so let me get this out. So Joe and I would normally do a project like this together, but he threw out his knee in jiu-jitsu a couple weeks ago. So um, I am trying to avoid having him do heavy lifting. Much better. Okay, but I gotta get it straight. And spread out these roots, and I probably should have made this hole a bit bigger, but it is what it is, and I'm not digging it anymore. All right, I'm just gonna make sure that that is lined up with my other trees before I get the rest of the dirt in. Yep, good enough. I'm missing my gloves, which I think I took into the house. Just making sure it's straight. Looks pretty good. You can fix, you know, a little bit of lean in a tree. But if it gets planted crooked, it's pretty much crooked. So I'm just packing this dirt down in between all these roots and laying any big ones out flat as I go so that they're not all bunched up. I don't want any like pockets or air holes. I'm not a clean gardener. As, as you can tell, like I can be if I need to, but listen, I just get in and get it done. Same with the other tree. I'll use the dirt clouds on the low end to kind of make a wall so that when I water the water builds up and makes a nice pool. And I do try and flip them upside down so they're not just rerooting. All right, I am gonna add some compost to the top of this the end of garden season, like end of spring, is a great time to check your smaller grocery stores for um, clearance garden items. Last year at um, one of our little local grocery chains, I got those bags of chicken manure compost and then also a bunch of bags of beauty bark that had been marked down to a dollar a bag. Um, and so that's just a great deal. I am able to save in my budget because everything we're doing, we're doing slowly, um, you know, as we can. So I'm gonna get some of this bark on that came out of the pot and then this one is done. Let's see how I did, is it crooked? A little bit, but we'll see what, how the, what happens as it settles. We don't need gloves. Though it's also why my manicure never stays nice. I rarely ever get a manicure. Um, I went and got pedicures with kid one, which is my oldest daughter, and she does not live here with us. And we were visiting, so we went and got a pedicure and just spent some time together. And on a whim, I got a manicure and it was not 24 hours later, it was ruined. So I never get a manicure. 
So our orchard is on year, let's see, this will be year three of the orchard. Um, we moved in 2020 from Southwest Washington state and that we moved in the fall. And so that first year, our entire goal, we called it year of the or year of the garden. And we got the fence up. This was all horse pasture before. So we got the fruit trees in that also happened to be the year where, um, the temperatures were insanely high. Um, we had all of these brand new fruit trees. The temperatures were in the 115 ish range and they really suffered. So we had a hard time in that first year on our orchard. And then the second year of the orchard, the second winter, um, the voles came through and we lost, I think eight or nine trees where they either chewed. So the snow level was over the tops of the trees. So they just went straight up the trunk and ate the trees or they ate them straight through the bottom. So that was year two of the orchard. Also a hard orchard year. This last winter wasn't bad. We didn't lose any trees. I was so thankful for that. Um, we did hardware cloth and protect them from voles. So um, that was a bonus. It was a huge snow year, but the hardware cloth went as high up on the tree as I could to the bottom most branches. So that protected the trunks and we didn't have as high temperatures. So we didn't lose any trees this last year. So that is the reason we opted to go for the bigger trees that are not bare root trees, even though they're cheaper. Um, the first year we bought bare root trees for the nursery, we bought them online from the trees were between 20 and 30 ish dollars each. The second year we bought replacement fruit trees. They had gone up to 39 to $69. And this year, all the trees were 59 to $79. I can go to the nursery and buy a tree that is many years older, already established, has a large trunk for anywhere between 89 and 149 dollars so with the amount of loss we have been having it just and the price of fruit trees online it just made way more sense to buy them locally and an added bonus i'm gonna grow potatoes in this pot so we decided that we are going to cut what we grow in the garden this year um just because we we just want a little bit of a break so we're only planting our raised buds and then taking care of the perennials that we are either replacing or already established so um, none of our in-ground gardens will be worked this year and i say that knowing full well i am going to do more than i think like i'm not growing potatoes in the ground so i'm gonna plant them in pots um there's always a way around and I don't know why I'm finding a way around considering I'm the one who came up with the idea. So I am headed to the greenhouse to get some stuff put away. I have a bucket of fertilizer to put away and some trash and those pots and um, check the seedlings while I'm in there. There's not a lot in there so far. Our last frost is not until June. So um, I am just at the start of my get things, get seeds planted stage. I'm always amazed at how different, um, you know, different everyone's growing areas are. And, you know, some people are harvesting right now because you know it's gonna get so warm that their cabbage isn't gonna grow and um, I'm just planting things. So garden, the difference in garden areas are also, it's just always so fascinating. Welcome to the greenhouse. So um, we bought this greenhouse, uh, I'm going to say about six, seven years ago. And um, it had always been a dream of mine to have a cedar greenhouse. And um, for many, 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 many years, I may do with 
the um i would always get the like they have green poles you know just little portable greenhouses and those worked just fine um so this was definitely like a dream purchase for us we did not build it on our own a lot of times people will ask for the plans for it we did not build it we bought it from a guy um, when we lived in southwest washington and he was in oregon who builds them and then he delivers them all set up we did move it with us from washington to idaho and um so when we moved it you know we had to take it apart and you know when you take something apart it never quite goes back together the same so i've had a few issues since we moved it but nothing major um a couple leaks that i've just sealed with some sealant and stuff like that but i absolutely love my greenhouse we did add electricity to it last the last year um, we were running an extension cord for lights and the heater i do not grow year round in here um, in the winter, in the colder months, sometimes we hit negative 15, negative 20. So it would take a massive amount of electricity for me to heat this style of a greenhouse year round with temperatures like that. So it does extend my growing season. Our first frost is the last two years we have had frost, a killing frost by the end of August. So it does extend my time frame. I can grow stuff in here through October ish is about when I pull everything. So I absolutely love my greenhouse and it is starting to get green in here. And um, I cannot wait for it to get full of tomatoes and peppers and all of those yummy, delicious things I cannot wait to eat this year. So I thought I would just take you around and give you so electrical box in hindsight I should have asked them to put that outside but it is what it is and we are not redoing it so I have electrical that runs all along the top and I only have electrical on this side of my greenhouse um, because this side is southern facing and it gets a lot of sun so as my plants get bigger I move them over here I also have this bed down here that I added and I usually water this side with a hose so it just felt easier to only have electrical over here so I have outlets one two three on the top to run my heat mats and my lights and then I also have one outlet down here because I end up putting a light with some plants in it here so I have top shelf bottom shelf on both sides and these do come out if I ever wanted to and down here this is just a bed I built with some scrap wood I typically will start greens in here and I've usually already started them by now but I haven't yet this year and so I will grow lettuces and peas in here and then later on in the season I put peppers and tomatoes in there so this side of the greenhouse is going to get fuller and I do grow my peppers and my tomatoes in here I do also plant some in the garden but um, I like to have some in here as well I just use a radiator heater set on low and it is on a thermostat so um, that's how I heat my greenhouse and I only heat it when I have seedlings in here. So the heater is in here typically about March and April and maybe some of May, but rarely. I'm usually probably turning it off by then. So this is kind of my main workspace. I have all of my pots. I do have a stool because sometimes it's just nice to sit in here and this is um, just a little tray it comes out um, and I can pot up seedlings here I have you know all my little tools and supplies and bins of things garbage bag and right now it's full of soil um, because we didn't have anywhere else to put it and when we went to Costco we picked up a bunch so um, I have a lot of the soil in here I do not have water in my greenhouse but I do have water close by this is a little shed and I keep a lot of garden stuff in that. So it's convenient. And then I have a window in the back I can open. You can see I just have an absolutely lovely view from my greenhouse and that was not intentional. It was just a happy accident in placement. You can see this window opens up and I have a view out my greenhouse window. 
So a couple other features of the greenhouse that does have a fan that is run on the thermostat. And so when it gets above a certain temperature in here, that fan kicks on. And then another feature are these vents. And these vents are actually, um, they're not electric, they're wax. And there's wax in here that as it heats up or cools down and contracts and expands, it opens and closes these vents. And I think that that is a great feature. You can see vent on each side, vent on each side. So there are also ventilation here on the bottom and one over here and then this door opens into a half so i will oftentimes keep the bottom closed and the top open to keep the cats out so i do have to stain the greenhouse um, to care for it and usually about once a year once every two years I stain the inside and I try and stain the outside every year. Um, and this is a year that I will do that. And I just have a cedar stain that I use. I give it a good scrub down and let it fully dry. And then I stain it. Uh, the fall is the best time to do that when it's empty, if I can catch it before we have freezing temperatures. So it's like a, a game of what's the weather going to do to cooperate to care for the greenhouse but i absolutely love my greenhouse it is one of my happy places on our property i love to just come in here it smells lovely um and i am so blessed to have this beautiful greenhouse space but for many many years i made do with what we had and what was available to me and that was not this big massive greenhouse it was you know the cheap hundred dollar movable ones that you find at Bymart or Walmart or things like that. So you don't have to have a greenhouse like this to garden. Is it prettier? Yes, but it's not necessary. Um, make do with what you have. You can garden where you're at. Mm -hmm.